hey friends and welcome back. Today I want to take you along and share with you my work from home routine and the habits and practices that I like to incorporate into my workday so I can stay organized and productive. And as we get into this, a big thank you to Grammarly for sponsoring today's video. But now getting into my routine, for me, this is something that begins before my workday ever does. I find that I'm a lot more productive if I don't have pent up restless energy. And so it's important to me that I get in some kind of activity before sitting down to work. And typically I'll either work out at the gym or go for a walk. But on this day, I opted for the gym since it had been a few days since my last visit. And usually when I go to the gym, I try to do a combination of cardio and strength training, though I tend to focus a bit more on strength. But then once I get back, I always like to feel my body so I can have the energy and stamina to be able to begin work on a productive note. That's really something I've been trying to emphasize lately because I've noticed that on days where I just get busy, I forget to eat breakfast, I'm just not as productive as I could be, and I just kind of notice an impact mentally and emotionally too. And typically for breakfast, I'll either make myself some eggs with sourdough toast or a smoothie with some protein in it, just depending on what I'm feeling that particular day. I find both meals very filling and nourishing, but on this day, I had a bunch of smoothie ingredients in my freezer already, so I decided to opt for that. And while I drink my smoothie, I like to get a bit of a head start on my day and just to spend a few minutes planning out everything that I need to get done. And I'll usually do this either in my bullet journal or in the notes app on my phone. I'll just begin by putting in the few daily tasks that I have pretty consistently on my plate. But then what I do changes a lot from day to day as well. So it's super important that I figure out what I'm going to do so I can make sure that as I begin work, I'm spending my time focusing on the right things. Without planning, it can be really easy for us to focus on the urgent but not important tasks. And so by mapping out my day and really figuring out what I want to prioritize, it helps me to focus on the needle moving activities more, the things that are actually going to make a difference. But then once I finish breakfast and planning out my day, it's usually around 9 to 9.30 a.m. So it's time for me to get dressed and to really begin my workday in earnest. And as the weather here starts to get cooler, something that I love to do is just to make myself a warm cup of tea to begin my day. It helps make the entire experience just a little bit cozier, and I feel like it kind of helps me mentally just ease into the workday. So right now, I'm just going to pop a kettle of hot water on to boil, and while my kettle does its thing, I want to set up my workspace for the day, get out my computer. During the fall and winter months, tea really does become a staple of my work routine, and I'll often have somewhere between three and four in a given day. On this particular day though, I opted for a mocha chai, which as you might expect, has notes of chocolate and coffee. It's super delicious, especially when paired with a bit of oat milk. So I just brewed the tea and let it steep for a few minutes before bringing it over to my desk. Okay, time to get to work, and I pretty much always like to begin my work days with answering any emails that might have come in overnight. As someone who's naturally a bit more of a creative person, I find that admin-related activities like answering emails are some of the things that I tend to procrastinate with the most. And so by starting my day with them and getting them out of the way, I'm able to check them off of my list and move on to less routine and more creative tasks. So that's kind of my general strategy, but then one tool that's been an absolute game changer for me when it comes to answering emails or just engaging in general correspondence is Grammarly. And they're a tool that I've been using for years now, so I'm super excited to be partnering with them for this portion of today's video. Because here's the thing, I may not be super passionate about writing emails or have a writing job, but I know that being able to write clearly is necessary to building and maintaining strong relationships in the modern day workplace. And what I love is that Grammarly is really a tool that helps you do just that. It's a digital writing assistant that comes alongside you to help your writing come across as clear and confident. One of my favorite features is Grammarly Premium's tone rewrite suggestions. You will have a bit of a tendency when I'm writing to qualify everything that I say. So for example, instead of saying this is a good idea, I'll often say this could be a good idea. And the result is that I'll often come across as unconfident or uncertain in my writing. 
And so the other day I was writing an email and I think I said something along the lines of this opportunity sounds interesting and I think it could be worth exploring further. And that's when Grammarly Premium suggestion kicked in, helping me rephrase the sentence so I would sound more confident. So Grammarly really is my secret weapon when it comes to writing. And what I love about it is that when you download it, it really seamlessly integrates into your life. So wherever you work, it works. Whether that's your email, Google Docs, or Microsoft Word, it's going to be there coming alongside you and helping to make sure that your tone comes off the way you want it to. So just go to Grimmerly.com slash Ashlyn to sign up for a free account. And if you'd like to get extra features, upgrade to Grimmerly Premium for 20% off. And I have to say, Grimmerly really has made such a difference when it comes to my overall writing. So I definitely recommend checking them out. But now I'm going to get started on my emails. Okay, but now getting started with my emails, this is a great example of something that I like to do called batching tasks. And essentially the idea behind this is that you want to group like tasks together throughout your workday so that you can dedicate 100% of your energy and focus to the task at hand without having to mentally switch from task to task to task. So while a lot of people will kind of start their day with emails and then check their email again and again throughout the day, I usually do it just once at the beginning of the day and I'll often handle any admin tasks at the same time because it allows me to work while I'm still in that kind of more administrative headspace. This typically takes me anywhere between 30 minutes and a couple of hours in the morning. And then once I finish up with my admin work, I'll usually take a quick break to fill up a glass of water. It can be really easy when you're working from home just to really get in a zone and to forget to take breaks. And so whenever I'm switching tasks, I always try to make sure that I'm giving myself a reason to get up, to stretch my legs a bit, and in this case, to hydrate, because I know that if I'm able to take care of my body throughout the workday, that's going to help me to operate at my best. And then we need to talk about another staple in my everyday work routine, and that's the hug breaks that I get from Christopher a few times a day. Working from home can get a bit lonely sometimes, so it's nice to see another face and to get a quick hug. And then after a few minutes, I'll usually continue with my work day. And from this point on in my day, what I do exactly really does vary quite a bit. One thing that has been pretty consistent though lately is I have been in the process of updating my website. I'm super excited that it should be finally launching quite soon. And so on this day, I just spend a bit of time adding some blog posts to the website so that they'll be ready for when it launches. Okay, time for our lunch break. And for lunch, I typically like to reach for foods that are going to be pretty quick and easy to make while still being very healthy and nourishing. But for lunch today, I decided on this pumpkin bisque soup. It's described as a creamy soup with pumpkin and fall spices. And my plan is just to heat that up and to enjoy that with some leftover ciabatta bread I have and a sliced up apple. So to prepare this meal, I just got out a small pot and poured the soup into it, making sure to stir it a few times just to ensure that it would heat up evenly. But then while the pumpkin bisque warmed up, I just quickly cut up a pink lady apple to have with my meal. Then I also sliced and buttered a couple pieces of ciabatta bread. There really is nothing quite like that pairing of a warm soup with a crusty bread. But then with lunch ready, I usually like to sit down for a few minutes to enjoy it. And I typically like to set aside about 30 minutes for my lunch break so that I have enough time to prepare my food without feeling like I need to rush and to enjoy it and to give my brain a bit of a chance to decompress. And so the way that this breaks down is I would say I typically spend five to 10 minutes preparing my food five to 10 minutes eating, and yes, I do realize I eat a bit on the faster side, but then I'll usually spend my remaining time tidying up and doing a few things around the house. Okay, so just finished up with lunch. That pumpkin bisque was absolutely scrumptious, by the way. But something that I often like to do kind of while I'm still taking a break and before getting back to work is to see if there's a quick house chore too that I might be able to check off my to-do list. And right now, we are pretty desperately needing to do a load of laundry. So I'm going to run into our closet, get all of our dirty clothes together and pop that on before getting back to work. So I just quickly spent a few minutes gathering up all of our dirty laundry and putting a load in the washer. Being able to do quick household chores like this kind of throughout the day during breaks, in my opinion, really is one of the greatest benefits of working from home. 
Things like this don't take a lot of time to do, especially if you're kind of doing them on the go throughout the day, but it really makes it so that when you get off of work at night, you have less on your plate. Then with the laundry on, it was time to get back to it. And something that I often like to do in the afternoons is just to change up my workspace a bit so I can have a change of scenery. And I'll often make another tea as I begin work as well. This one is a cinnamon rooibos tea but then I'll get out my computer again and settle into work for the afternoon. Okay, time to get back into work and to dive into some of the big stuff. On days where I'm not filming or creating some kind of content, I typically spend a large portion of my day editing. But whether I'm filming or simply putting videos together, I like to save that more high energy work for the afternoon when I typically feel the most productive. And that idea of kind of trying to schedule your workday around your natural energy levels is something that I haven't really heard a ton of from other people, but I found it to be incredibly beneficial for my personal productivity. And with this type of deep work especially, I find it incredibly helpful just to really get in the zone. And for me, a few things do that better than music. So often as I'm working, I'll just throw on some chill background music and I find that it really helps me to focus. But then after a few more hours of work, typically between 5 and 7 p.m., really just depends on how much I have to get done that day, I'll slowly start wrapping up any current projects that I'm working on, update my to-do list, and make any necessary plans for the following day. And then I'll start putting away all of my work-related items and just trying to reset the space. And not only does this help ensure that my home remains neat and tidy, but it's also a really helpful way just to signal to my brain that it's time to switch gears. It's time to leave work behind us for the day and to get ready to enjoy the evening ahead of us. All right, well, that's pretty much it. From this point on, I'd basically just finish wrapping up any loose ends, make some dinner, and then get on with any plans that we had for the evening. And tonight, those plans include a good bit of relaxing and chilling. But I really hope that you enjoyed coming along with me today and that this maybe gave you a bit of a glimpse into what my routine working from home looks like. And I hope too that it maybe helps to inspire or motivate you, whether you work from home currently, it's something that you're wanting to do, or you're in some kind of hybrid situation at the moment. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time friends, I am wishing you all an incredible day.